Alright. Hello, can you hear us? Can you miss something? Okay. Hello. Okay. Waiting on. Waiting on. Alright. Okay. One, two, three. Hi, everybody. Hi. Welcome back to our live. And today we're going to discuss a lot of a lot more of questions uh, that we sent in the Telegram. Okay. Let's start with the first question. Shall we? This is the final session. Yeah, it's the first and tomorrow's exam. Yeah, oh my god. So it's been a long three days. <laughs> it's a hardworking hamster. We'll try our best. Ah. All right. We okay. as our hardworking hamsters will try to answer the questions. According as, to the scheme. Yeah. And not just. Don't crucify mm. us, please. Okay, my question. So the question that no, no. is oh the question is sent by this girl named Ainul Mardia. Okay. Okay. Continue. Okay. So the question that. Uh, I know my dear wanted us to answer is this question B. So we first the first step in any question is first to find the keywords and which chapter that we are trying to tackle with right now. And as you can see here, this is a random variable Q that has a distribution of Y to the N of mean to the variance. So we can determine that this is from chapter 10, which is special probabilities. And this is from specifically, if you can see this, this is an N here. So this N and also this expression of mu and variance indicates that this is a normal distribution. So the information given in this question is that three sigma or three standard deviation is equals to three mu. And mu cannot be equals to zero. Hence the question asks us to find P Y is more than four mu. So since this expression is Y, so this is an uh, this is this supposed to be Y. So firstly, we must deduce that So we firstly can deduce that from this expression 2 sigma is equals to 3 mu Hence, a sigma is equals to 3 over 2 mu and since this is a normal expression, we must use the the normal curve with the Z formula. That is not a curve. Oh my god, okay. <coughs> so, we have drawn our graphs and we have uh, determined our mu and our sigma. So we, uh, what's left to do is we have to determine the Z value for P, Y more than for mu. So P, Y more than for mu. So we should change this to Z expression, Z more than for mu minus mu, which is our mean over with the standard deviation. This can be also rewritten as Pz more than 4 mu minus mu over 3 over 2 mu. 
because we are taking this expression and substituting into this this expression right here we are putting into this sigma so if we simplify this would be p z more than 2 so we got the z expression for this so if we look at our graph we actually would want to let this as 2 and we want the area following that this onwards this would be the area that we want so if you look at your statistics book you should be able to get the point of a z is equals to 2.00 and this will lead you to the answer of the answer of the statistics Zero point zero two two eight. So this is our definite answer. So it's a pretty simple working step because it is a question for a much greater A question over here. So the allocation for this B question is probably lesser than the A one. And I think this uh, jalan kerja is sufficient enough to get enough marks. So uh, next, I will pass on to the next, next presenter. presenter. Nirman. Nirman. <laughs> Thank you, Asha, for the explanation just now. Now let's welcome our next presenter, which is Nirman. What question are you going to do? You already got the app, right? So, what's the other thing? Use this in. Why do you integrate in? Not double check. Why do you do that? Okay. 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 Hello there. In this question seven from KMKT. The question says that in every delivery of cupcakes to a particular restaurant, 30% will be returned due to it being not favored by cupcake lovers. Okay, so then we can read our question A, right? It says that suppose 20 of the cupcakes are randomly selected from a delivery, what is the probability that at most most cup most five will be returned? So if they tell us any um return and also up here they've given us the probability of it being returned as well so immediately first we have to know whether this is binomial normal or poison so first they've given us um suppose 20 of the cupcakes so we know that this will be our n so when immediately we have n and here this uh, at most is our r you know that this is going to be our binomial so since here also the pertanya return and here also the this percentage is for return this will be our p so knowing that we can already answer question 7a first let me list npq so it'll be easier for the further questions 7a our n is 20 p is 0 0.3 and q is 1 minus p being 0 0.7 all right, so now the question is asking us what's the probability of at most? That means maximum lima sahaja akan dipulangkan. So kita tahu like if maximum is five, that means it can be one, two, three, four and five, right? That is why VP X is less than equals to five. And also uh, before answering these questions, make sure you define your X first, sorry. So I would like to make let, let x be the number of 
cupcakes return. So, but you need this other so that we know what we are finding. Okay. All right. Back to the question. It says that at most five cupcakes will be returned, right? So that means P X is less than equals to five. X is less than equals to five. All right. So we know that our binomial table is reading from left to right, right? So we can't directly be finding this answer in our table yet. So we have to change this into the arrow should be pointing towards the right. So if I want it like this, okay. um, we know that now we let's just say like uh, three, four, five, six, seven cupcakes. Let's just say seven cupcakes. Now we want to find all this. So immediately it'll be the same if I do one minus uh, yeah. Yeah. Interesting. x more than six, more than equals to six, right? So that's what I'm saying. P x is less than equals to five is the same as one minus p x more than equals to six. So now this one, we can obtain it from the binomial table. So from the table, I got that it's 1 minus 0 0.5836. And once you do the math, you'll get this as 0 0.4164. All right, that's it for question A. So now moving on to question B. Suppose the restaurant will be holding an event which requires an order of 200 cupcakes from the same supplier. Approximate, neither by the clue, approximate the probability that is between, between 56 and 62 of the cupcakes will be returned. So since they said return, our P will still be 0 0.3. And this 200 is our new N. And this will be our r <laughs> all right so now we can answer question 7b but there's a small problem at first glance we know that we have our n is 200 our p is 0 0.3 our q is 0 0.7 okay at first glance this may seem like binomial but you're wrong because our n is more than 50. when your n is more than 50 binomial won't work you have to do continue take correction and turn it, change it into normal. So in order to do that, you know how like mm, normal, we have to have our mean and variance. So now we have to find our mean and variance. No problem because we already have n, p, and q. So our mean is n, p, which is 200 times by 0 0.3. Our Variance is NPQ, which is 200 times 0 0.3 times 0 0.7. Your mean you'll get 60, your variance will get 42. All right, so now you can just fit it inside. Your normal will be 60 and 42. All right, now we can jump into the question. Question said that between 56 and 62 so b probability of 56 in between 62 all right so we are going to be finding this now but you can't directly find it because we're doing continuity correction since um you already changed from binomial to normal you have to already also be changing these so we know that um, let's say in the number line this is our 56. This is more than our x is more than 56, so it's going more than. Since that there is no uh, equals to sign, we'll be taking it here plus 0 0.5. So for 62, assuming this is the number line 62, x is less than 62. Since there's no equals to, we just follow the arrow, go here. So it seems it's behind the number line, it'll be minus 0 0.5. So this one will now be P 56.5 less than X less than 61.5. Right. Now we can proceed. We have already corrected this 
you know we can proceed to solving it as normal x kena tukar kepada z sebab ini adalah normal dah so nak tukar kepada z kita kena pakai formula z equals to x minus mean over standard deviation all right so equals to p 56 sorry 56.5 Minus by the mean. Mean, we have already found it up here. Our mean is 60. Minus 60 over standard deviation. Okay, remember, this is our variance. Standard deviation, kita kena square root 42 ni. Square root 42. Z. Negative. Okay, sorry, less than. 61.5. Minus 60 over square root 42. So this one, we just do the math. Sorry. Um, okay. The math, you'll get negative 0 0.54 less than Z, which is less than 0 0.23. Okay. So we know that this is the same as um kita okay lah saya tunjuk graf dia graf dia macam ni is negative 0 0.54 0 0.23 okay this is the area that we want and in order to find this area we know that we can just change this into 1 minus P, Z is more than 0 0.54 minus by P, Z is more than 0 0.23. Yang ini, yang ni dua boleh cari dalam table. Then it's 1 minus, sorry, the answer, I just give the answer to you. Answer is 0 0.2964. Done. All right. Now, question B two, which is a bit new. We don't find these questions all the time. So, question B two is. All right. If the probability of observing less than n number of cupcakes among those delivered, which are returned, is zero point nine nine two use the normal approximation to determine the value of n so basically they're saying that um, let's take that uh, probability of observing is let's just say it's y la. okay y so they're trying to say it's p y is less than n equals to zero point nine nine two and now you have to do normal approximation and find the value of n Okay. It's not hard. Okay. So now that we know P, Y less than N equals to 0 0.992. Okay. Sekarang kita kena tukar ni kepada um, Z. So it equals to so, sini equal dan equation boleh letak satu equal je. So, sebab kita letak equal di sini, kita tak boleh letak. Kita tak boleh letak dua equal macam ni. Salah. Okay. So, when you change this to Z, it will become P. Z is less than. Okay, when you're doing this approximation, right? You're going to be doing the correction, continuity correction. You have to do N minus 0 0.5. Okay. Sebab kan dalam number line, kalau ini adalah n, since it's saying less, right? Less, it's going to say, you're going to be minus 0 0.5, right? Sebab itu kita kena minus 0 0.5 kat sini juga. Minus 0 0.5 and minus with the mean. Mean yang kita cari awal tadi adalah 60. Untuk question B1, mean is 60. Our, our variance is 42, remember? It's 60. Okay, then divided by standard deviation standard deviation is the square root of variance equals to 0 0.992 all right so this one equals to 
1 minus dz is more than n minus 0 0.5 minus 60 over square root 42 equals to 0 0.992 and yeah okay once we bring this one to the other side one and negative one to the other side right we'll be left with p z is more than n minus 0 0.5 minus 60 over square root 42 equals to 0 0.08 okay guys so zero zero eight zero point zero zero eight okay guys um sekarang kita nak cari value kat dalam ni tapi dia bagi value ni eh. biasa ni okay biasa dalam soalan normal dia dia akan bagi value kat dalam ini suruh kita cari ni eh. so kita pun um, value ini akan ada di tengah-tengah dalam table itu so di, kita akan reverse process itu kita akan tengok dalam table the inside of the table which value will be giving us 0 0.008 so we, what we can do is we can sorry we can do n minus 0 0.5 minus 60 over square root 42 equals to in the table i found out that it is 2.41 and once we do the random math, right, we will be getting n equals to 76. So this will be your final answer. So if you have any questions, you may ask. And remember, don't, don't ever put two equals here. It's only one equal. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you, Nirma, for the explanation just now. So, guys, when you said this, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna explain about question from side at all. Okay. Uh, so, okay, so the probability that the student passes math is 0 0.4. If the student passes math, the probability uh, that the student will pass physics is 0 0.7. So, means that these two events two event is connected to each other. So, Link tu, kita hantar kepada orang lima, dia akan buat my link. Don't worry. We'll pass physics 0.7. If the student fails mad, the probability the student will pass physics 0.63 and let M be event passes mathematics and F be event passes physics. The following three diagram is kind of the information. So means that we are very lucky that they already give you the three diagram so we can see uh, our calculation is correct or not. So, go to, going to the question 1A1, calculate the probability that the student passes physics. They don't give you any rule. They just give you calculate the probability that the student pass physics. So, we know that physics is F and fail physics is F prime. F prime is the same as probability of F 1 minus probability F prime. So it's the opposite of it. So it's fail. Lah. And then, uh, calculate the probability that the student passes. So we need to calculate the probability of this. And then this. So, since these two events is connected, we should times it. Means that 0 0.4 times 0 0.7 plus because these two events is not connected. The only event is connected is when you pass MAT. And then you pass physics, or you fail math, but you pass physics. Okay, so times with 0 0.6 and times with 0 0.6. So I calculate, calculate it just now, and I got 0. 
Zero point six five eight. Sabak salon probably ni atau office worker. Office worker. Okay. So I got zero point six five eight. That's the probability of passing physics. And then the next question. Calculate the probability that the student passes mathematics if the student passes physics. When you see if the student passes physics, means that you need to use this specific formula, which is probability mathematics physics. Ah. So you need to remember this formula uh, for the examination. This formula, if you uh, if you expand it, and we will call P M intersect F. And then over probability of F. So you need to know that uh, this is the intersection, means that F is specific to the mathematics. Well, this is a general passing of physics. What I try to explain just now is general passing of physics, we calculate just now, passing of physics. So we already know that the value of probability to pass physics is 0 0.68. So what you need to do is you just need to substitute this to here. And probability of M intersect F is passing. So M is pass, mathematics pass, and physics pass. The only thing, the only pathway that mathematics pass and physics pass is 0 0.4 and 0 0.7. So the, the whole equation should be 0 0.4 times 0 0.7 divided by 0 0.658. And then we got 0 0.4 to 6. Right, next question. Next question. Determine whether the event of a student passing mathematics and physics are independent. Uh, for this so, uh, for this question, we need to understand that we need to remember the formula to prove that the equation is independent or mutually exclusive. So there are two equations. One is how to prove it's mutually exclusive. Uh, this is the first equation that you remember and then the second equation is uh, to prove the independent equation equation four which is P M intersect F equal to P M times P F. All right. So if you just substitute this value 0 0.4 and then 0 0.658. This is the probability of passing physics into the equation. <laughs> we will got 0 0.4 times 0.658, which is not, uh, how to say, equal to 0 0.28. Means that this is is not uh, an independent <laughs> equation. <laughs> okay. okay, that's all for my explanation for today. Let's uh, give a chance to the next presenter, which is Joshua. Well, no. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
Okay, um, next question. What question? Any group, uh, health and breakfast. Me. Yes, yes. Um, okay, um, so I'm going to explain this probability question. Uh, okay. Um, office workers. So I'll just make it simple. Um, I'll write down everything that I have acquired from these sentences into information. So probability for them to exercise, I'll denote it by E. Probability to exercise is 2 over 5. Then probability to eat breakfast is 2 over 3. Okay, this is still understandable. And for the next question, the next sentence is quite tr tricky because there's a of those who always eat breakfast. Conventionally, we learn um, given or if, but right now it gives of those who always eat. But so this is actually the same meaning as exercise. Also take regular exercises. So E given B, because of those who always eat is also the same meaning as given that um, from those who always eat breakfast, 9 over 25 also take regular exercises. So we can uh, interpret them the same way. Uh. So uh, for those who eat breakfast, 9 over 25 take exercises. So you can see it this way. So basically, I've, I've acquired all the information from sentences. And now let's solve our questions. A, always eat breakfast and take regular exercises, which is very straightforward. The question wants us to solve probability of exercise intersect breakfast. So we can obtain this from, okay, we can actually obtain this from the information that I've just extracted, which is P E given B. This is from the question. This one is from the question. This one is from the question. So mm, we can also change this into B E intersect B over P B. This is just according to the formula. If you've remembered the formula, this is uh, very straightforward. And so we also have P B. Coincidentally, we have P B. Here is two over two over three P B. So let's just sub and uh, cross multiply P B here. So we should get P E intersect B. It's nine over twenty five times two over three. It should you should get six over twenty five. At least that's what I got from me pressing my calculator, unless I pressed wrong, which happens quite often, but I'm pretty sure this is correct, right? He's traumatizing. <laughs> let me, let me be checked, let me be checked. <laughs> okay, okay, that six over 25 is correct. Okay. You're sure traumatized. <laughs> So next one, um, so we solved question A and from this question A, we've obtained a very important information, which is PE intersect B. And in these kinds of um, questions where they have part A, part B, part C or Roman um, one, two, three, um, the, most, uh, the most probable in situation is that you'll have to use the um, information obtained from the first part to solve the second part or the second part to solve the third part. That's what always happens uh, but yeah so in this case it is this way because we want to find does not eat breakfast and does not take exercise do, does not do exercises oh wait um by the way e intersect b is the same as b intersect e so um i'm not writing it um the right way or the wrong way it's, it's all the same so i'll just follow the question question says that does not eat breakfast so i'll do breakfast first breakfast prime intersect exercise prime so breakfast prime is the opposite of breakfast meaning does not eat breakfast and exercise prime is the opposite of exercise meaning does not do exercises so let's use what was it called 
the the union crime. What was it called? What was it called? Yang Tuka, yang para ini. The the one that. Uh, the Morgan's. Yeah, the Morgan's theorem. Yes, yes, yes. Not in syllabus. Oh, no, it is. Not in syllabus. The uh, Joshua showing off. No, 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 no. Oh, no. shoot. Okay, okay. Showing off. Uh, I, I taught him that. Shoot. Uh, okay, but never mind. Okay, okay. So, um, the Morgan's is not in syllabus, but you can use it, and Joshua is showing off right now. Shoot. As he should. I don't see it. Okay, okay, now. Easy, it's easy to learn. Okay, so for the Morgan's theorem, let's say um this is the one we are we want to change. So um from the Morgan's theorem we can understand that this whole thing is the same as this whole thing. And if you look closely, this is basically just everything here. Just inverting it. B prime, I change to B. Intersect, I change to union. E prime, I change to E. And the bracket outside is nothing, so I changed the bracket outside to prime. So this is basically the Morgan's theorem. Uh, <laughs> I didn't know. I, I forgot that this was our syllabus, but it helps. It helps. It helps a lot, yes. Okay, so um, B union E prime, which we understand is also B union E. 1 minus B, B union E. Okay, prime is uh, 1 minus everything minus uh, this. This is simple stuff. So B union E, we can obtain B union E from this. B union E is, because this is not mutually exclusive, since it has it has an intersect, so it is definitely not mutually exclusive. It, if the intersect is equal to zero, then it's mutually exclusive. So for non-mutually exclusive uh, cases, we do union by adding both of them. But we need to we need to minus the intersect of it. Okay, so uh, we have PB, we have PE, we have PE intersect P. So everything we have every single we have every single information we need. So just suck everything in and do it lah. Then the rest is just up to your fingers and your calculator. Mm, let me press once again to confirm my answer. I got 13 over 75, okay, which I double confirmed is correct. I didn't press the calculator wrong, so 13 over 75, this is what we should get. Uh. So, um, this is what I have obtained for A and B. A is 6 or 25 and B is 13 over 75. So, C. For C, um, so, so C, uh, we need to determine whether always eating breakfast, which is basically B. Uh, we, denoted it as, we denoted it as B. And taking regular exercises, which is E, which we also denoted earlier, are statistically independent. Okay, so for this, you need to do a little bit of studying. We need to, for probability, we need to study mutually exclusive and independent. So for independent, this is the general one. So, this is the general statement. If if it is in independent, P A times P B equals to P A intersect P. So in our case, P E times P breakfast equals to B intersect E. B intersect E, E intersect B, same thing. So, okay, we uh, I'm not sure if it is equal or not yet. So. Let us just uh, don't need to put this sign. So let's use our information give obtain. Oh, am I correct or not wrong? Yes, I am correct. Okay. So for exercise, we have three two or five. Breakfast, we have two two or three. Two or three times two or five. 
two or three times two or five, same as two or five times two over three. Yeah. So, is it equals to B intersect E? Uh, B intersect E, E intersect B is six over 25. So, supposedly it's not equal. Uh. Press your calculator and you'll see. Yes, it is not equal. So, since they are not equal, they are not independent. Or the the other way to write it is they are dependent. Not independent is the same as dependent. Okay. So that's it for me. And yeah, that's all for this question. Okay. If you have any problems with uh, my explanation just now, just type in the chat, right? Ah. Uh, yeah, uh, you sh you should you should be able to understand this. This question is not super super difficult. Okay. Okay, that's all from me. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Joshua. Thank you, Joshua, for the explanation. Let's go next presenter, which is which is Ashra, my old friend. We are old. We are old. No, no, we are old. Yes. Saya ada pada saya tak mau mengapa saya ada pada saya ada pada saya Huh. But, but I have one step that I'm, I'm, I don't understand. If if that step is wrong, then my whole thing is wrong. So like, is it like... Um, I have properties, yeah, even. I'm wondering, I, I think shot that one. Okay. Yeah. But I don't okay. understand why it... A cross, A cross, R becomes A cross B. So, good. Good morning, Gila. <laughs> good morning, everyone. So, we'll be tackling this question sent by a girl. I'm not sure who. So, this question, we need to identify which chapter this is from. This and highlight the points. So, A. No, the fact that this is a continuous random variable. This is a continuous random variable. Thanks. And this is a probability density function. So, ni F kecik. F kecik meaning this is just a normal F. Not the formula. Continuous means this is a function. A, lambda A. So B should be a position vector because B position vector, yes. Then so, position fully cross the and direction. No. So this should not. So how we calculate yeah, EX in the I'm first place? Well. So EX a for a continuous yeah. variable, we would normally should do not, should not magically go on. X to the FX to the respect of X. But for this question, we here. didn't get we didn't get <laughs> ex. Instead, we got. Can I re rewrite this as one over x? And also, e one over x can also be re rewritten as x negative one. Hence, we just input this value over here. This would be integrating the x negative one of f x from. You need to see the limit here, and we need to input the value of the limit. So in this case, it's 1 and 2. So this is 1 and this is 2, to the respect of x. So we need to take the function of it and integrate it. 
in which we will get 4 over 9 4 over 9 boleh buat keluar sebab 4 over 9 ni constant so we put 4 over 9 keluar daripada integral kita 2 1 and we have 4x minus x minus x kuasa 3 over x to the respect of x so if we simplify this this would be 4 over 9 uh, potong 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 jadi kuasa 2 jadi uh, 4 minus integrate from 1 to 2 of 4 minus x kuasa 2 this will equals to 4 over 9 1 to 2 of 4x minus x plus 3 over 3 so if we simplify this expression we will find out that akhir sekali jawapan kita akan dapat 20 over 27 which is equivalent to 0 0.741 hence this is our e to the 1 over x ni expectation value for if e x if x in the expression here is 1 over x and that answers question a that's the general idea of question behind uh, behind question a and for B, we need to find an expression for fx. This you see this fx f besar. So it's a cumulative that, that is valid for 1 to 2, where f denotes the cumulative distribution function of x. So it works faster for my brain. Wow. We need to find, we need to, the question basically ask us to do this, benda ni, so, yang macam ada squiggle besar ni. Tapi dalam F bentuk F, F besar. So, if we know, yang F kecil, <laughs> the normal probability density <laughs> function, <laughs> nak tukar P, the cumulative density function, we need to integrate. And kalau kita daripada cumulative, nak P yang normal frequency, kita kena differentiate. So, what we're going to do is that we are going to integrate this function. So, kalau kita nak create another function, we need to integrate the function from the lowest limit to the uppermost limit. So, we need to make this function true for all. Hence, we must do... We must do the integrate from 1 to x because we are creating a function 1 to x and this would be 4x uh, 4x this would be 4x 4x minus x kuasa 3 4 per 9 ni kita letak luar sebab dia constant if we integrate this oh my god this is ugly handwriting nanti tak faham so if we do this we continue we got 4 over 9 we got 2x square minus x kuasa 4 per 4 from x to 1 to x so you guys just simplify expression ni and you will you will eventually get 8 over x 8 over 9 x square minus x kuasa 4 per 9 tolak 7 per 9 so this is just the function for x di antara 1 hingga 2 tau kita kena note yang kita perlu tulis before 1 and after 2 juga 
sebab this is a function. This is a cumulative distributive function yang minta, soalan minta, soalan minta find an expression of fx. So kita kena tulis the big kurungan. So f besar equals to buat kurungan besar. Okay ni boleh turun sikit kot. F besar We will be writing this for 0 For less than X is less than 1 And kita just salin benda yang ni Just letak di sini This will be 8 over 9 X square minus X over 4 Over 9 minus 7 Allah Thank you. Minus 7 over 9. This is true for x is more than 1 and x is less 2. And since this is a cumulative function, the akhir ni is supposed to be 1. Sebab kita akan longgok-longgokkan frekuensi tu from 1 to 2. Sebab 1 to 2 ni yang kita duduk ada nilai function ni. Jadi kalau lebih dari 2, kita mesti akan dapat nilai 1 saja. Sebab Kita dah longgokkan from 1 to 2. So, this is our table tu lah. This is the final answer for question B. And this is the question for, this is the final question for A. Final answer for A. So, next we will look upon soalan C. Which soalan C minta hence calculate P 1.25 or uh, until 1.75. So there are two ways of doing this soalan. One could use the expression of F G, and another person can also use F X F, F besar X. Either way betul. Tapi teknik kena betul. Teknik for this ini kita punya frekuensi is under the graph. So kita perlu integrate. Kalau yang ni kita dah longgokkan dia jadi satu function. So kita just boleh substitute. So since soalan minta P from 1.25 X 1.75 I would highly recommend yang kita just letak nilai ni dalam F besar. Sebab kita dah ada nilai F besar. So, awak nak complicate diri sendiri by integrate, integrate and uh, when we can just substitute masuk soalan. So, here we just F besar. Since we know 1.75 will be much greater than 1.25, this would be 1.75 tutup kurungan minus F besar 1.25. What does this expression actually mean? This expression actually means that, okay, tak mau ugly. Sorry, yellow fans. Yellow is an ugly color. So if we have the function over here, if we have this expression from soalan B, we should be able to just masukkan nilai 8.9 1.75 kuasa 2 kuasa 2 minus minus 1.75 kuasa 4 dah lagi 4 lagi 9 sorry Tolak 7 over 9 from, from So yang ni Tolak uh, Dengan nilai yang sama 89 1.29 1.29 1.29 1.29 1.29 1.29 1.29 1.29 1.29 1.29 1.29 1.29 1.29 1.29 1.29 1.29 1.29 1.29 1.29 1.29 1.29 1.29 1.29 1.29 1.29 1.29 1.29 1.29 1.29 1.29 1.29 1.29 1.29 1.29 1.29 1.29 1.29 1.29 1.29 1.29 1.29 1.29 1.29 1.29 1.29 1.29 1.29 1.29 1.29 1.29 1.29 1.29 1.29 1.29 1.29 1.29 1.29 1.29 1.29 
we should be able to get our final answer, which is 0 point zero point five six two four so this is the final answer for question c and our final question our final question for this big question is d so so any very long lah and it's the full package it's asking for a lot of the fundamentals of this chapter so i hope that you guys know the fundamentals very well before you tackle the question so that you can get the correct solution so so lani minta median so kita perlu tahu yang median is the center of the graph so kalau hangpa kira from the uppermost limit to median or the lowermost limit to the median you should be able to 0 0.5 so one could also do it uh, either personally i would choose to integrate because it's much safer and i would say that i would integrate from 2 to the m of fx to the respect of x will be equals to 0 0.5 yes so if we integrate this, we will eventually get 2x square minus x plus 4 bahagi 4 kurungan 2m 4 over 9. Ni hasil dah integrate tau. So tak perlu integrate lagi. Ni dah siap, dah 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 simplify jalan kerja sampai sini. So that ampa tak sepayalah this don't be as long. So if we simplify this even more, this would be 4 minus dalam kurungan 2m squared minus m kosong 4 per 4. So jangan lupa kurungan tau di sini. Because prior to this, I, I did the mistake of not including the brackets and i messed up the positive and negative and got lost so <laughs> so if we Simplify this even more. This would be four minus two. Then two thousand. Then belajar two thousand alat ini semua. Dulu saya kira, dulu saya kira sekarang saya kira sendiri. Hmm. Tahu tak? Empat per empat minus dua m squared plus twenty two over eight equals to zero so you must see that any highest power is four so kita kena guna calculator function yang tak ada sampai kuasa empat lah so if we calculate for m we should be getting four values since kita ada for uh, apa, highest highest power is four so just masuk ni dalam calculator 1 over 4 then 0 22 0 23 over 8 End product should be something of oops. End product should be something of m equals to two point four seven. M equals to one point three seven. M equals to negative one point three seven, and m equals to negative two point four seven. 
So from this kita kena tengok range balik since uh, we are playing with the range of 1 to 2. Jadi negative values are out of the picture and anything less or more than 2 is also out of the picture. So yang ni this is more than 2 so this is out of the picture. These are negative values these are out of the picture. So this is the only answer that is valid. So M is equals to 1.37 and that's the correct final answer which the median would be 1.37. Okay, that concludes my presentation. Okay. All right. Hello, everyone. It's another question. So, yeah. so question five. It says that a discrete random variable well, is discrete. Okay, random variables x has the following probability distribution. Okay, so they have by kita dah p x equals to x. Then if uh, function there, okay, these are values of x. All right. So now they want us to find the value of q. So first we have to. Remember yesterday I have told us that in these kinds of questions it's best for us to build a table even though there are up to seven values but it's still quite worth it. So x first um, yeah. is when x is zero, we just substitute zero into this x, then the kind of vector we'll be getting one over q minus three over sixteen. When you do the same for one, you get 1 over Q minus 1 over 8. Okay. Do it for 2. You did 1 over Q minus 1 over 16. 3 is 1 over Q minus. Is that for, for 3, right? Since it's 3 times uh, 3 minus 3 is 0. 0 per 16 is still 0. So it's just 1 over Q. And for 4, it's got 4 is a bit different. Remember, they gave us a modulus here, right? So 3 minus 4 is actually negative 1. But we know that negative 1, when we modulus it, is actually positive 1, right? So that is why it's actually, it's still 1 over Q minus 1 over 16 and not plus 5, 1 over Q minus 1 over 8. And finally, 6 will be 1 over Q minus 3 over 16. So, ni lah table kita. This will be our P. X versa equals to X kecil. Alright. So, now we can go to, go on to solve that. You know that the summation of P, X equals X, is 1. So, what we'll do is we'll total up all these all of this kita total up dia akan equal satu so kalau nak senang kan kita tahu kita ada 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 so it'll become 7 over q then uh, once we total up all the other numbers we'll, we'll actually be getting 7 over q plus negative 3 over 4 equals to 1 when you do the math we get that q equals to 4 all right so now moving on to question b for this question um they given us t see you see here the modulus all right come back to it later x minus 4 is less than 3 all right we know that when it's a modulus right 
Okay, let, let's let's imagine yeah, a mirror. Right? Because, you know, modulus, the value inside the modulus yeah. can be either positive or negative, right? Once we solve it, only it'll always be positive. What I'm trying to say is, assuming like negative 3, okay, is also 3. Modulus 3 is also 3. This is what I'm trying to say. So, for these type of questions, there are two ways. First one is x minus 4 is less than 3, right? First one, you can either separate it into two, as in like... Embarrassingly. <laughs> x minus 4, sorry. X minus 4 is less than 3. And x minus 4 is more than negative 3. Or you can try doing this, which is quite faster. Okay, let's just say this like a mirror. And here's our 3. Okay. You know that um, x minus 4 will be more than negative 3, right? So it's here. And x minus 4 will be less than 3, right? It's here. So that means, goes to p, negative 3 is less than x minus 4, less than 3. You can do this straight. But if they give like x squared and all that, that one we have to use this technique. Law. That one you can't evade it. Or if they say that instead of here less than, they give us, instead of here less than, right, they give us more than 3, then you will also be getting this eventually. So anyway, so now we got this. So sekarang we know that this one, you have to bring it both sides, plus 4. So it'll become P1 is less than X, less than 7. Okay, now you have to look back at the table. So now we're trying to find the probability of X being greater than 1, but still less than 7. So now greater than 1, that means we want 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, but less than 7, right? So instead of calculating all this, what you can do is, you can just do like 1 minus all this. You'll still be getting the same probability as all this. And that's what I'm going to do. Equals to 1 minus p x equals to 0 plus p x equals to 1. Okay, so it's 1 minus, remember our q is 4, right? 4, okay, 1 over this, our q. 1 over 4 minus 3 over 16 plus 1 over 4 minus 1 over 8. Okay, total it equals to 13 over 16. I know the answer scheme that you sent is actually 3 over 16, but we went through it multiple times and we've, uh, we are concluding that ans the answer scheme is indeed a typing error. So we are quite confident that the answer is 13 per 16. So that's it from me. If you have any questions, you can message us directly. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Uh, I'll be doing the next one for the this is chapter nine. Right? Nine, right? Yeah, it's nine. Who are you doing? Ten. No. Okay, okay. 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 So this is okay. Maybe you're not Maybe? Not yet. Okay. So, um, kami boleh buat. This is we need to know that this is cumulative dulu, because big F is cumulative, meaning you don't have to integrate anymore. It is integrated for you. So question A, we need to find constants A and B. So we just substitute Y because we know that, um. A, a y squared plus b y the equation is in this this place and the y is in between two and four so we can sub the y if we sub the y as four it will be equal to one because we know that four y y when y equals four it will become one okay so because the graph looks like this so it will be straight 
this is this is four and this is this is supposed to be two so four and two are the maximum and minimum so we just sub inside the formula four and two this is the minimum so it should be equal to zero all right so this is for cumulative we just sub inside no more integration and so we should get a equals 1 over 8, b equals negative 1 over 4. You can do simultaneous equation or you can just press your calculator for the unknown with two unknowns and you, you should be able to get the answer as well. So for it, the question A is quite simple, just you need to form the two, the two equations for A and B and you, you can find A and B straight away. And we need to understand that since this is cumulative, so the four is the max, which is the so the probability for when x equal y equals four is one, and the probability for y when y equals two is zero. So once you know that, you can form the equations and you can do simultaneous, and you can get a and b. Question five uh, b is c. We need to find c. So, um, this is p y more than c. Zero point eight eight. So we. We can change this into um, because for the graph for this um, big F, this is uh, the y axis is the probability. So for C, let's say C is here. This is 0 0.12. And because it says that y more than C, so more than C meaning. Um, more than here. This whole place is 0 0.88. So for less than C, it's zero, definitely 0 0.12 because 1 minus 0 0.88 is 0 0.12. So after you get this, you can straight away solve the whole thing. Just substitute C into the equation. We got A is 1 over 8, C square. Uh, B is 1 over 4, C equals 0 0.12. Just press your calculator for um degree uh two degrees so the degree two for the calculator and you should be able to get 2.4 and negative 0 0.4 negative 0 0.4 is naturally rejected because it is not possible that c is negative 0 0.4 since our range is only from two to four for this equation our range is only from two to four so it's definitely between two to four 2.4 is different between two to four okay that's it for this question. Um, because uh, the, the person who asked this question only uh, circled A and B, so I already did A and B. The median is um, whole thing equals 0 0.5, and you can do it 70th percentile equals 0 0.7, probably. Yes. And yeah, probability density function is differentiation. EY is X. Uh, y times then integrate variance y is y squared uh, times uh, multiply inside then integrate minus mean square then variance this is two square just two just two square the whole the variance you got here you should be able to get this okay that's it Hello, can everyone? Today I'm going to explain about chapter 10, special probability distribution. Or it can be A. Why A cross A cross R? Because at the right side, you can never do A. Actually, so I need to start the graph up like months before. And so, but so jump the then baru dapat sampai saya bagi sampai. Alright, let's discuss about this question. And so where the topic was found that Dr. Wasang of fresh graduate managed to buy their first car after working for a year. So I think I don't know. I'll try. Alright. Sir. Yes. Missing. Okay. This one. 
Okay, let's go to the next question, which is So we know that the forty-two percent of a fresh graduate uh, buy their first car. Means means that the other uh, other than forty-two percent, they are fear to buy their first new car. So fifty-eight percent. From the percentage, you know, we can get the probability. So when we want to get probability, we need to divide by 100. And this will get 0 0.42, and this will get 0 0.58. This is our probability. Now, if six fresh graduates, so the N is six. Six fresh graduates are selected at random. Find probability that at least two of them managed to buy their first car after working for a year. So probability of x if six first ones find out that at least two of them managed to buy at least two of them so two or up so x is bigger or equal to two okay so uh this mean this equation means that the grade uh, the graduate after one year at least two means that two three four five etc 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 and this will be a long process since we need to use this equation and c x a x b sorry okay one minus probability n minus x yeah so it's a long process to just substitute one by one by one by one by one so we need to simplify the equation by doing this one minus probability x is smaller than one okay so we expand it one minus probability x equal to one or and wait where is it okay x is equal to one Minus probability x equal to zero. Okay, we substitute the formula. One minus six choose zero. Zero point four two zero. Zero point three six five. Four two zero point five eight six minus six choose one zero point four two one zero point five eight okay and then we will got the probability which is one minus zero point zero three eight one Plus zero point one six five four, and the answer should be zero point seven nine six five. I hope this is the correct answer because there's no answer. Uh, so probability of x bigger than two. Macam macam ada because kita kita tu buat lah kita tu Show belum. Okay, that's the correct answer. Okay, uh, that's all for today for me. Okay, we're gonna welcome next uh, presenter, Nirman. Still on the way solving. Still on the list. Oh, shit. To the rescue.
Okay, okay. Oh God, that needs it. Okay. Uh, Thank you, Nima. Five bucks. Okay. No, no, no. Thank you. Ensure to come. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, come with Tanya. Sada, sada. Ini. Sada Tanya. Tanya, Tanya. Kamu Tanya. Tapi saya belum boleh. Pas minta Tanya. Semua Tanya. Tidak ada jawapan. Tidak susah. So, for this question, given that A, B, and R are vectors, so A, B, R vectors, lambda is a scalar, and we have information of A cross R equals B. You can write this down if you want. A dot R you can get to. So, by using um, this, A cross B cross C. So let me copy this. Let me copy this. So actually, this is just a very general statement for a property. So we can suck in any unknown into this and just change it accordingly. So our suck, uh, we have A, we have B, we have R. So C is just a general unknown for to put inside. So we, we do not have C in our solution. We can start into this A cross, A cross R. Okay, so just uh, change it accordingly. A dot C is the third one, so dot R. B is the second one, it's A. Minus, first one, this is the second one. The B is, uh, the B up there is our A, A dot A. Then C is the third one, is R. So, um, if you can get here, basically you're almost uh, halfway done. Okay. Um, why is it A cross A cross R? Uh, because A cross A cross R is the one that we can actually solve. If you sub inside uh, anything else, most probably you won't get the answer. So, at least, at least that's what I got. A cross A cross R. So, this is, let's just put this aside first. Let's solve the right, right side first. A dot R, we have two, two A minus, A dot A. A dot A is A modulus square. This is properties you need to go remember. Or do A dot A equals modulus A modulus A cos, cos theta. And you can get the same thing as well. It's A dot A is the same as modulus A square. And then R. Okay. Then the hard part is this part. A cross A cross R can actually be expanded into A cross A. I'm sorry, before that, before that, just sub, because we have A cross R right here, A cross R is B plus lambda A, so let's just change it into B plus lambda A. Okay, now we can, we can expand into A cross B plus A cross lambda A. Because lambda is a scalar, you can take it up and it will be the same okay so i i didn't write the right side because it's all the same so i'll just write it right here okay so a cross a because a and a are the same vectors they are in the same direction so they never intersect each other or you can say that a and a is the same vector so they're parallel parallel vectors cross you cr if you cross parallel vectors you get nothing you get zero because they never intersect they never touch each other so a cross a is zero um lambda is a scalar so no matter what lambda is times zero is zero so plus zero a cross b we want we want r because the question asks us to show show that r equals so let r be the subject just uh just pinda pinda and you should be able to get your answer just yeah i'll just copy the way my say cross it okay you should be able to get this just just this way okay the hard one is for you to to figure out 
you need to put A cross A cross R inside. And another hard one is the expansion of this. This is a uh, property. So A cross B cross C, you can get A cross B, uh, sorry, A cross B plus C. You get A cross B plus A cross C. This is what we can obtain from this question uh, is that this property exists. Okay. And another property is A dot B plus C equals to A dot B plus A dot C. So, wait, so yeah. A dot B plus C is A dot B plus A dot C. Yeah. Is this is this correct? Yeah, that's yeah. correct. So this is the same as this lah. Actually, it's just that kami kami tukar dot dia jadi cross aja. Yeah, like like expansion lah. Okay, okay. So ah, uh, these two are the properties you need to remember. Okay, to solve this question. Uh, actually, you need to remember cross only, but the dot is very useful as well. Just remember them, both of them. Okay, that's all for that's all for this question. Uh, it is a very good question, by the way, for the person who asked this. Okay. Hey. <laughs> Hello. Hello. <laughs> Welcome back, everyone. We're not gone already. We still need to berjuang. So, the question I'll be tackling today, uh, I mean, not today, right now, is. Oh. Thanks, Eddie. Okay, so so Lenny is asked, and I would say, kita first determine Lenny about berapa. So if you see here, you can see poison there. Sorry if you can hear any noises in the background. Okay, thank you. So if you see here, we have a we have the poison distribution right here. So this should be chapter 10. Poison. So our general formula should follow x to PO of lambda and lambda variance and mean. So this is the general idea of lambda. And if you remember from our SPM days, you should be familiar with the formula of variance x is equals to m minus e to the x over m squared. Basically, formula ni just represents yang um. Uh, so we say e x squared minus this is our expectation value for x over the yeah. pending bracket. It, it follows the same formula. It, it's the same pattern in which this is our this is our e x squared and this is our mean. So soalan ni soalan ni minta kita uh, identify calculate the mean and variance of the number of roses if your answer to one decimal place. So n will be equals to 80. Our summation for x would be 395. And our summation for x squared would be 1384. 
So we just substitute substitute the given formula here into our expression and we should find out that variance of x would be equals to 1384 over 80 minus minus need to 95 I'm sorry, me to nine over three nine five. This would be two and this would be two nine five over eighty square. And there x well if you calculate this, this should be three point seven. Round off to the nearest one decimal point. And for the mean, we need to know that this is also the mean. So we just take it out and 295 over 80 this would be equals to the mean and the mean would be 3.7 also this would be equals to the variance variance would be equals to our mean so this this follows the distribution that we have in which our lambda would be equals to our variance would be equals to mean so this would follow our poison distribution perfectly and this is why we have already the answer for two it just explain how the answer from part one support the choice of a poison distribution as a model we need to explain that the variance is equals to the mean and is equals to our lambda for our uh, Poisson distribution. So this will grant us one mark and two marks already. And for the final part of this trilogy of questions, using the mean from part one, estimate the probability that at most four roses will be found in a randomly selected square. So most four we are following a poison distribution we must write the expression of a poison distribution with the lambda of 3.7 and we want the p of x is at most at four at most here meaning kurang atau sama dengan so maksudnya paling banyak nilai rose yang kita jumpa adalah empat so you must also know that poison is a discrete function it's a discrete distribution so the equal signs matter you can't just vanish the equal signs out of nowhere because the equal signs will determine whether or not you will take include four in your calculations or not so uh, the way i do this is i usually make a quota like serodi teach thank you <laughs> shout out to serodi and these three four five six seven eight onwards towards infinity because our poison doesn't have a limit starting from zero so i would say uh less uh less and equals to four must be the four kita included and buku kita baca from a point to cut to the kanan <laughs> so we can safely say that for us to get this value the summation of this we can agree is equals to one right so we can see that one minus this value will get us this value right yep so this would be one minus d x more or equals to five and note that five is included over here five is included over here you can't miss out five because five is not included in this expression so good, no? if we kira this so good question, no? one minus zero point three one two eight make sure how to know how to read the book by now so next exam this would be zero point six eight seven two this is our final <laughs> answer <laughs> the answer for c the answer for b like ah, macam ini atau ini, atau ini, atau ini. and the answer for yeah. a 
So that concludes my presentation for this question. Thank you for the question. And we will pass to the next presenter. English. So I heard yang ada lagi soalan yang masih dalam pergaduhan lah. Jadi jadi kita sabar sikit lah especially this question. This question is causing a lot of practice right now. So bersabar ya wahai Nur Fitiati. Allah Akbar. Apa dia? Okay, someone asked for the explanation for this part. So, I'll try my best to give the explanation. So, the question is, uh, the question okay. is uh, why we need to change uh, the sign in three no, no, no. Roman three. Why we must change the sign in three Roman two, I believe. Oh, so there is more than open this? Not enough. Not enough. Not enough. More than equals one. The question is why we change the sign in. You shouldn't. Uh, eh, you open. Okay. So well, we try to do this question first. So, lorry owner, a car rental company, has a fleet of six similar lorries. So, six similar lorries ni highlight, which he rents out for the customers on a daily basis. It is known from past experience, the daily demand for the lorry has a poison distribution with mean of 3.56. Calculate correct to three decimal places the probability that in any day, in any day, at least two lorries are not rented out. Okay, the daily demand for the lorry has a poison distribution with mean of 3.56. At least two lorries are not rented up. Yes, I knew it. <laughs> English. Relax. It's some burger. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Kalau ini ada ada equation dan boleh yang. Yes. Yes, So this is the one you rented out. No, no, this is the one. What what question? Oh, the one that. Mm. Diana, what? Okay, okay. Oh, <laughs> Two lorries are not rented out. The demand is not fully met. Find the probability that exact one lorry is not rented out in exactly two out of three. Ah, aku sangku. Are you fighting for it? Aku tanya lah orang yang bagi soalan. Okay, kejap, kejap.
How about uh, like uh, something when you do this question? Hmm? This is uh, the question sent by Asha. It's kind of simple, but okay. Okay, we'll try. For this question, we uh, I think we must wait on the owner for clarification. Yeah. Okay. Let's see. Ah, there it is. It's the okay. Uh -huh. So we'll just skip the okay, IV side. Let's skip the question. <laughs> We totally know the answer. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you, Eddie. So, given two functions, y equals e to the x and y is equals to 2 minus x, show that one of the real roots of the equation lies between 0 and 1. So, first and foremost, cari ni chapter mana? I would say this is easiest to identify. This is obviously chapter 3. This using Newton Repson. So for this, we need to know that y is equals to e to the x and y is equals to 2 minus x. Kita nak cari root. So, kita kena establish a new function in which the one will intersect. So, this will be fx. Actually, tak mau lagi, tak mau lagi, tak mau, tak mau, tak mau. Kita first equals kan dua, dua function ni. This will be e to the x equals to 2 minus x. Ni p sini boleh jadi e to the x plus x minus 2 equals to 0. So, 0 ni kita substitute as a new function for e to the x. As x minus 2 is equal. Okay. Okay. So, kita nak buktikan yang ada 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 root di antara 0 and 2. How do we do that? So, we must substitute f0 and f1 into the expression. So, this would be e to the 0 plus 0 minus 2. E to the 1 plus 1 minus 2. This will be 1 minus 2, negative 1. This will be A minus 1. This will be less than 0 and this will be more than 0. So, we must establish the cat. Kita dah tahu yang F0 ni less than 0 and F1 is more than 0. So, kita tahu yang uh, f0 is less than 0 and f1 is more than 0. So this shows that a root lies between 0 and 1 for fx. Okay? So, into soalan ah, A, finish. Yeah, and then for B, we need to know the general formula which is xn plus 1 is equal to xn minus f of x over f prime of x. So, I would say you guys uh, mantap can skip your differentiation skills because it's going to be tested in this chapter. Well, not too detailed, but I've seen before yang ada soalan trigonometry keluar dalam ni. Ada soalan yang minta differentiate. So, kena tahulah kalau d dx sine dapat cos. Kalau d dx cos dapat negative sine. E x dapat e x. 1 ln e. Kalau ln x dapat 1 over x. 1. Any basics differentiation kena tahulah at least. So, for this question, dia minta e to the x sahaja. So, we should not worry about ln and trigo for at the moment. Tapi mana tahu esok soalan tiba-tiba decides to be crazy. So, we just establish first our fx is ex, ex 
plus x minus 2. So if we differentiate this, this would be you differentiate ex dapat? Yes, ex plus 1 minus 0. So ni tak ada nilai. <laughs> kan? So our next step is we need to approximate a value. First semak soalan dulu. Kalau soalan tak bagi approximate value, kita kena approximate sendiri in the range of 0 to 1. So I would suggest take 0 0.5 as our x naught. So we can mula substitute in the formula lah. Which is x1 is equals to x naught plus e to the x naught plus x naught minus 2 over e to the x naught plus 1. So you just work it out. Remember for each and every one of the solutions, kalau kita nak pindah px2 and x3, kita kena substitute tau nilai ni masuk dalam formula ni juga kita kena show. Because uh, according to lecturers, there are marks given for those parts and we need to show the substitution part for the for the graphs. So let me first calculate the, just the calculator. Okay. So tak kau sabak. We 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 get the answer eventually. Also, sorry, this should be minus, not plus. Eh? <laughs> so x x one dapat zero point four four three nine. First, kena tengok soalan juga. Soalan kata correct to three decimal places. So kalau kita nak ambil nilai x for x2, x1, x3, kita kena include plus one sahaja. So kalau three decimal places, kira sampai plus, plus apa, sampai four decimal places sahaja. Don't overextend to apa, five decimal places or six. Zero, zero, zero. Bagi nampak cantik. And because again, this would be 0 0.4429 This would be <laughs> Okay, thank you It's 3 equals to 0 0.4429 And bila dah repeat Bila dah repeat at least dua kali ni Maksudnya kita dah dapat final answer dah lah So our root Is equal for, for Fx Is X equals to 0 0.4429 And yang ni 4 decimal places For dp Soalan minta 3 dp So kita kena bagi 0 0.443 Jawapan akhir dia Yay. Finish. So that's for Newton Repson lah. And chapter ni juga boleh tanya about what do we say trapezoidal rule. For this all I could uh, say is that you guys need to know the differentiation between ordinates, strips, and x values need to know this and you guys need to know how to use the formula of h2 x naught plus xn uh, plus dual bracket x1 dot 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 yn minus 1 okay. you guys need to know how to use this formula 
So I think that's for my part on this presentation or short presentation for Newton Repson method. And can I pass this to the next presenter? Uh, next presenter? Yeah, I'll answer that. We are trying here. They are trying their best, so uh, I can say they are crying. Also. They are crying also. They are trying and they are crying. <laughs> In the meantime, I just expect to see you when I go down. Okay. I thought you said in the meantime, I'm going to cram for my friend. <laughs> oh, no, it's fine. You know, like, it's oh, that's fine. Oh, that's fine. Oh, that's fine. Okay, then I shall. Nah, let's cry. <laughs> let's cry. So, lagi nak explain apa je lah. Jom. I think we ran out of questions already. Huh? No, no, no. They are waiting for that one particular question. Don't hold you. Come on, guys. Kalau ada soalan, boleh tanya lagi. We still have time. In the meantime, you are the best no comment. Nak explain apa? Korang tahu tak satu tambah satu dapat kosong. Eh, Allah Allah sila 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 Okay, uh, show that one. Uh, how can a line not intersect with the plane? How can a line not intersect with the plane? How can a line not intersect? Actually, it's not intersect, right? So, if you can't see the line, it's not the same as the plane. It's not the same as the plane. Twenty eight. No, no, this. No, this. This. The government is trying to save the scholarship money. <laughs> I think uh, the plane. No, I'm going to tell you. Oh. Ni ah, for A. Maknanya ni kira yang selalu. So. Kalau line parallel dengan plane, dia kira intersect ke tak? We already discussed this. If a line and a line is a parallel, uh, what's the characteristic? It will not intersect. It will not intersect and the distance will always be the same. So kalau parallel dengan line, kalau plane dengan line parallel, it's the same thing lah. It will never intersect lah. Yeah. Don't put infinity in the equation. <laughs> 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 Pernah tak sebila buat exam Sebab tu kat unit se Soalan tu tanya And then saya jawab Sebab tu lepas exam tu Selepas ini ni Apa jawab benda yang Happens to all of us <laughs> Happens to all of us Yang paling paling fedak sekali Kalau keluar exam baru nampak macam nak jawab soalan <laughs> Saya selalu cakap Saya selalu cakap Satu soalan lah Saya rasa macam saya tahu tapi tak nampak Timu tu kat main Masa pukul Exam lah boleh buka pukul 4 Dari pukul 3 macam tu hmm. Balik rumah pukul 6 Saya biasa sembahyang Masa sembahyang je dapat ilmu Itu lah you Banyak sangat dosa Masa sembahyang baru nampak Masa you susah you tak ingat you Tuhan Jadi kan And Matt is brutal And Matt was brutal Eh, Matt is traumatic lah Ya, bukan brutal dah traumatic Kita semua dah habis dekat tak nak Haa, beda Dia makan Ok lah, yes You want to present any soalan, sir? Ok Ok Stop crying, sir Stop crying, sir Let's welcome our hands to the leader
Dia nombor macam mana? Tak ada lah. Yeah, uh, let me try to find a question. Uh, yes, if it was a better can log out and then <laughs> we don't have to answer anything. Oh my god, Okay, IK memang kurang, memang sangat. Betul, buat nombor ni, 20A. 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 DLC mana? Berapa? Satu aja kan. Ini memang... It's a 20... Berapa? Berapa? 2016. This is a 2016 question. Satu unit. Satu unit, satu set. Okay, uh, I want you to look at this question. Hello, there, viewers. I think I better post in the group as well. Okay, uh, try to read it first and try to visualize. It's not so easy. Okay, because uh, it says here the line does not intersect with the plane. This line does not does not intersect with the plane. Can you imagine how does a line not intersecting with the plane? If the line is not intersecting with the plane, can you look at the camera? I mean, can you look at me? Okay, so this is this is a plane and this is a line. Yeah. So, if not, they're going to intersect. So, the only possible way for the line does not intersect in plane when they are parallel. Maybe we are looking at it. If they are parallel, then only this line won't intersect in the plane. So, when they are parallel, this will. Okay, if I talk to the person, Eddie is holding it. Okay, okay. So, so, that means here, the normal of the plane is 90 degrees. So you can see here, if they are parallel, the normal of the plane is 90 degrees to this line. Alright, so if they are 90 degrees, then you can use dot product because dot product got, got 9 or 0. Alright, okay. Alright, okay. Then we, so, going to that question again. So since not intersect, you go here. It's parallel. So that also means the normal normal to the plane is a uh, ninety degrees perpendicular perpendicular to the line. So I since it's perpendicular to the line, it's in ninety degrees. I can say that L dot normal this equals to zero so l the direction is a uh, two negative one three dot if you're talking about unit stuff it's a little bit okay 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 so, so, so. Okay. okay, so here you can easily solve it. 2A minus B plus 3C equals to 0. So we have shown. Shown. Okay, if there's no more question. Tak ada soalan dekat habis dekat. Kita tak sampai. all questions. So tak nak. Janganlah. Janganlah salah kedai. Itu too scary.
Okay, all right. Uh, so before we end, there's there's something I would like to show for the muscle skin. Uh, we talk brief. Uh, you can you can hear my conversation briefly with the shrubs just now. We talk about parallel. <laughs> okay. Uh, what do we know about parallel lines? He he gave me the weird look just now. Say. <laughs> Okay, okay, okay. So, so, so what can we say about parallel? You can say, uh, one, the distance are always the same. And two, we can say they never intersect. So that's what happened if I put these two parallel lines. You can see this distance are uh, always the same. And they, they will never intersect, okay? Can we agree on this part? No argument? Now, let's talk about a railway railway track. <laughs> this is the one that I shall give me the loop is now. <laughs> give me the loop. Okay, if you look at the railway track, it's a really good one. Okay, can, can we agree before we continue our conversation that the railway track are parallel with each other? And if, if they are parallel, yeah, okay, the, the, the distance are always the same. Can we agree? But in here, you can look, you can look, they, they are getting shorter and shorter and shorter and shorter and shorter. So ultimately, they will intersect at the end of it and people will say to me sir but that is just an illusion but in maths <laughs> uh, yeah, they, they are arguing here <laughs> uh, but if you are if you in maths and also if you're art student point of you will learn this is called the point of infinity of or the line of infinity what we are talking about. Huh? Yeah. You can see that's what we call the line of infinity. So when infinity happens in the equation, then you can get some weird stuff, such as this, where parallel lines can actually meet. Okay, and you might say, Sir, Tachi, this is tipu, sir, this is illusion. You cannot bring illusion over here. So I can bring you to one question. I can show you one meme. It makes a logical sense. They, they, they draw a circle and then they draw a perimeter of a square which is four and then they remove the corner and they do it infinitely and they get the perimeter is equals to four which is pi equals to four which is a problem okay if you if you look at this equation it's correct but what actually happened how i can pi equals to four when, when we learn pi is 3.141 and so on to the infinite because because of this process repeat, repeat to infinity once once infinity enter the equation, then weird stuff will happen. That's why in our maths, normally when we do the limits question, we only said x approaching infinity. We never said x equals to. We never say x equals to infinity. We only saying that it's approaching infinity. So don't put infinity in your in your maths, then things can get crazy. And the moment I tell Ashraf just now, parallel never intersect. He gave me the looks. He said, hey, didn't you teach me this? Said, <laughs> you betrayed me. <laughs> <laughs> I told you, don't put infinity in the equation. <laughs> okay, anyway, thank you very much for, for all the day. I think the, all the hamsters here are hungry. They said they want to go away. Thank you very much. Okay, so, guys. Okay, so say hi. Bye. 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 Say they bye, they don't want to say hi anymore. They say, get lost, we are hungry. No more questions. <laughs> okay, all right, thank you very much. Okay, thank you for watching, and please comment, share, like, and subscribe. And good luck and all the best for your exams. Uh, if I were to give you one tip for exams, it will be two things. 
number one, get enough sleep by tonight because tomorrow you need the energy. You can't work with your brain fried. And two, when you do for the exams, please do it with speed. Because normally people people always come out from the exam hall and tell me, say, no enough time, no enough time. Because you, you don't do with speed. How to do with speed is, uh, you need to understand, the exam is trying to test whether you can do or not. The exam is not testing whether you can remember or not. When you look at the question, if you can do it, then straight away do the questions. If you can't do the question, if you think, uh, uh, maybe, 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 if you got this moment of maybe, maybe, you're not that sure, maybe I can remember this, just circle the question and move on to the next one. Right? Just, just go to the next question. Leave the page blank or anything or just, just do it in the not number rise way. Okay? And I have to say, when I was a student, when I was in college, when I, I think too much, uh, is this, is this, is this, and I run out of time. Only for the second paper, I do with this change of strategy. I do with the one I can do first, then only I can finish the question with a better time management. All right? Don't expect you can do all of them. <laughs> the, the question is going to be difficult. Yeah, it's, it's, it's normal for you to skip the questions, not unable to do the questions. What's the not normal one are two things that you that you don't fully show your potential. That you, you because of time, because of scared, or because of not sleeping well, you don't have enough stamina, you don't have enough time to do. That's the one the first abnormal. The second abnormal is whenever there's an abnormal student with a super genius that can actually answer all of them. <laughs> but not all of us can do that. Okay, I think that's all for you. Thank you very much for watching and listening. Please come sure and subscribe. And once again, thank you to all the hamsters for helping us out. Okay. Okay, bye. Thanks guys. Bye guys. Ambil lah kau.